we want to glorify and exalt the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for he is the one upholding every hand and allowing us to have this again a privilege and another opportunity to interact in a godly manner through this platform and may the name be glorified and I want to thank you my brothers and sisters for joining us once again we praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and so our title for today says living wisely and the supporting verse is coming from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 to 17 which says look carefully then how you walk not as unwise but as wise making the best use of time because the day are evil therefore do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Shall we seek our God and our Savior in prayer? Our gracious, kind, and loving Savior who dwells up in the third heavens. Father God, we want to say thank you for giving us this word. Thank you, Almighty. May you please open our hearts, open our minds, for us to get something from what we are about to learn today. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Living wisely. So, first and foremost, let's try to emphasize, let's try to elaborate what wise means. You know that a person can be intelligent, but not wise. How is that? Before we listen, before we learn how Paul is calling us to live wise, Let's understand why being wise is. Here we are given instructions. Here you give a person instructions. Okay, let me give um, two synopsis of two people. You give two people instructions. You give them the same instructions. Then the both of them got the instructions clear and assimilated the instructions in them. But one managed to do what? To implement those instructions effectively. Who can we call to be wise? Both of them are intelligent because they managed to get the instructions with them. They know the instructions. They studied the instructions. But the one who is wise is the one who implemented the instructions effectively. Now, what causes people to live wisely? It's because of what we see of value. Now, here we are given a description of um, a crystal jug. Now, this crystal jug from different fields when it was presented from different views. So, the first one described a jug, the first one, um, the actioneers described it as a 19th century um, French uh, claret jug. And giving it its worth, they may change to say it's worth 200 US dollars. Now, when the other one, when the um, um, the the biders recognize the jug. They recognize it as a rare jug, and from what they saw and how they described it and its worth with them, the worth was um, six point um, five million USD. Now, what can be the difference? How? What made them describe the jug and give it its worth differently? So, this is obviously that those who gave the jug the high value, they know something higher of value of that jug. And those who gave it a low value, they know that they have less knowledge of that jug. How we value things. It's how we are going to do, it's how we are going to uh, implement what we know. How we value our education is how we're going to sacrifice more for it. How you value your business 
It's how much you are going to sacrifice for it. If you see it has less value, you will therefore um, use less time to it. <clears throat> so, Paul contrasts um, what us believers value and what pagans value. So, we're going to see that with the pagans, what they value, we already know our our eyes can see in our everyday life. We see what happens. We can describe it as it's now worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. People pleasure um, sexual immoralities. They pleasure drinking, to be specific, alcohol. They pleasure things that only pleases their souls. But what is it that distinguishes us from them? And so, Paul's um, in Ephesians 5, verse 5 and 6, instead of placing their bite on um, partying and uh, drink, um, drunkness, this is what um, believers do. They treasure, among others, all that is good and right and true. Mark that one. What believers should pleasure here is all that is good, right, and true. Remember, when you just choose good things, it means that you even um, you even want to, you know, even um, even um, pleasing your body, pleasing yourself, is something that people consider to be good. But is it right? This is now the Christian perspective now coming in. Is it right? If it is, then well, go ahead and enjoy it. If it is not, then um, don't. Ephesians 5, verse 9. And so, instead, let there be thanksgiving. Okay, and so, what is it that we are supposed to do as believers? For God has sacrificed the Lord for us. This is what Paul says in um, Ephesians 5, verse 8 and, um, to 15. He's calling us to walk in love. We see that when Christ was asked the greatest commandment, he um, emphasized on love. One, love your God with all your heart and all your soul. The second, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is how the Ten Commandments are segmented in two. When you love your friend and when you love your neighbor, you love everyone around, uh, around you, you will be able to do what is right to them. You will not look down to them. You will not do something bad to them. You will therefore value them. And when you love God, you will walk according to what He instructed us to do. You will um, worship Him. You will give thanks as he commands us to do. Ephesians 5, verse 3 to 5, then introduced a section expressed concerning for um, sexual ethics. So, we see now to say, in our days, sexual immoralities, it's now um, other people's side us, other, it's the main hustle. They go to work when we are sleeping, it's their time to work. It's now, uh, sexual behavior is now becoming a normal way of life these days. It's not just common among youths, but even to married partners. And so, not only that, 
we see that there is even an aspect of um, drunkenness, um, bad speech, risk uh, entertainment, and immoral acts. In addition, urban concept, um, um, certain um, anonymity and um, permissiveness and fostered immoral sexual practices. All these things, they're not hidden anymore. They are all around the world. And so, walking as a children of, um, as a children of light, how are we then supposed to walk in a light? Paul writes, let no one deceives you with empty weight. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes forth, comes um, upon the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 5, verse 6. Paul identified those practices, various sin without shame or repentance, the sexual immoral, the sexual immoral and impure, or who is covetous. He has offered a blunt assessment. Those who are in Christ and disdain to be participants in his future kingdom should not act like those who are not. So he is worried about all the immoral practices that we see around us. Even adolescents are now engaging themselves in such um, in such um, immoral act because of what they see around them. Elderly people are the ones who now inflict the same kind of immoral practices because they learn from what they see. We teach our young ones. We are supposed to walk in the light as it is called here. To say to be deceived, this is what Paul uh, owns, but uh, it's warning us about being deceived. When you are deceived, then you will then therefore face the wrath of God in the end time judgment. The wrath of God that comes upon the son of disobedience. Remember that when you disobey, here. We are teaching each other how to live wisely. We have the instructions with us. Therefore, we are supposed to choose either to be intelligent, reading and know all the instructions, or be wise after knowing the instructions and implement them effectively, as a Christian should. And so, walk as a children of light. When you have love as it is shown you, when you are walking in love, you are walking in light. And everything that you be doing is what is pleasing in the eyes of God. So try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord, not what is pleasing to yourself. That is Ephesians 5 verse 10. The pagan seeks pleasure through all the immoral things that we have mentioned here, sexual um, immoralities and impurity of our capaciousness, the believer's goal here is dramatically different. Not to please oneself, but to please who? God. As a Christian. That is what we should take as we walk in love as Christian. As we walk uh, in the light, and so, this is now um, taking a call to say, all believers, let's wake up. Ephesians 5, verse 11 to 14. There is a powerful warning that Paul is giving us. Therefore, we should consider ourselves as 
people who are allayed, they just wake up. We see everything around us. Let's see which path are we taking. Are we wise? Are we doing what is right? Are we following the instructions? If yes, then it's well and good for us. But if no, then just know that you who is deceived, we will face the wrath of God's in the end time judgment. So here it, here it says, Believers are to live before unbelievers as light in the Lord and children of light. As I have mentioned to say, everyone behind us, all the children, are following what we do in our various places. Wherever we are, wherever we go, whatever we do, whatever we speak, the music we listen to, the content we follow on the media, everything that we do. We are teaching the young ones. Are we living to, are we living as a light in the midst of unbelievers? Are we living as an example to everyone? You know, where there is light, the darkness shine away. This is what Ephesians 5 verse 8 is trying to say to it's trying to elaborate to say when you as a believer you are holding a life of light in you full of love among the unbelievers then you are carrying it to them but whatever we do if it is a negative thing just know that that's what you are preaching to, uh, to others remember that we are all disciples therefore what you are carrying there is what you are teaching them. You may not utter any word, but just know that whatever you are saying, whatever you are doing, it's a language and everyone will understand. And the younger ones will follow you. Then, if they follow all the bad things, even if you don't intend them to, who is at fault? It's us. The people they see. So, a powerful appeal to Christian believers is to awake to their role as a missionary. We know what we're supposed to do as missionaries. To um, act as reflectors of the light of Christ, of Christ in, the dark, um, in the darkened world. That is what we are supposed to do. So, Ephesians um, snapping up the bargains. Snapping up the bargains. So, Paul co concludes Ephesians 5, verse 1 to 10 with two clusters of exhortation. Two clusters of exhortation. So, 15 to 17 and 18 to 20 of Ephesians chapter 5. Completing a section with sustained interest in sexual impurities. So the first cluster, begin with the exhortation. This is the exhortation. Look carefully, then how you walk, not as unwise, but as what? As wise. Very important. Restarted as do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. When you understand what the will of God is, then you will do, you will walk in Christ according to what his will commands us to do. So, in between is, call, is a call to make the best use of time. So when you read the verse very carefully, you know, when we observe time, when we observe time, we'll be able to do 
what is right at a particular time, at a, in, the, in the correct place. My father always told me to say, whatever you want to do, ask yourself, what am I going to do there? And do it, then you'll never waste time. Are you going to school? What have I come to do here? Is to learn. Okay, let me learn and do the appropriate things and go home. You've been sent. You, made, you meet other people on the road. Ask yourself, am I supposed to follow what they're asking me to? Or should I just proceed with my journey um, where, I'm sent, where I'm sent? Do as you answer yourself that question. Then you never waste time. You always do things right at the right uh, in the in the right place, right time. So the way we walk as Christians, we are supposed to walk in the light. We are supposed to walk in the truth. We see that this metaphor, the metaphor of um, this, the word walk, this simply means our way of life. To say, he says to mention in Ephesians 5, 2, 8, this metaphor to say, watch your step. Look at where you're going. So that you shouldn't be deceived. Are you living in the light? Or you're just doing whatever you're pleased to? That is what we are supposed to follow as Christians. And so, spirit-filled worship. Let's discuss about this in working as wise. Spirit-filled worship. You know, where the presence of the, the Holy Spirit is, there are different tongues. Where the, the Spirit of God is, you know, I meant our uh, different languages because others mistake tongues for other things. So, where the Holy Spirit is, people are in one accord and there is communion. Where the Spirit of God is, there is love. Where the Spirit of God is, there is a use of time correctly. Therefore, let us remember in all our prayers to say, as I am praying here, I should remember to call for the Holy Spirit, as God promised for sure it will descend and live in you. So, Spirit-filled worship. So, Paul argues in Ephesians 5, verse 1 to 20 to say, Believers turn away from the mind numbing use of wine and instead experience together the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Of the Spirit. Paul bans um, drunkenness, all, all sorts of unspiritual kind of matters. All thoughts, um, the way of life, the way we're living. So we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, now listen. There is a horizontal element to worship. Since, so we have um, in singing, in church members, I, in a sense, speaking to one another. Ephesians 5 verse 19. However, the specific object of the musical praise in the Lord, which as indicated in Ephesians 5 verse 20, identifies the Lord Jesus Christ. So, this is to mean to say Everywhere, everywhere we go, whatever we do, we must live in a spiritual aspect of life. 
in the music that we listen to, are we worshiping in the Holy Spirit? In the words we use, in whatever we do, the words, despite of looking for money, just remember that I must do something that is pleasing not to me, but to God, because that's a distinct um, difference between pagans and believers. And if we do that as disciples of Christ, we are able to do what is right and we are able to take the message all around because we are walking in truth, love, and in spirit. This is how we are supposed to walk in um, wisely. We now have, it's good to remind each other, it's good to read the Bible um, every day because we are feeding ourselves instructions and after knowing them, remember to be wise and implement them effectively. Remember not to behave in a certain way that you can choose to, pleasing ourselves. Let us remember that Paul has showed us to say a distinct thing is that as believers, we are supposed to please God, doing what is good, what is right. And I pray that we must walk in spiritual. He said, thank you for receiving this message. Hope you will, hope this will bring a change in us and whatever and wherever we go, it will show that we are now living as a spiritual person. You are now living as a person who is walking in love. You are now living as a person who is a light bearer. This is my prayer for you and I. Shall we close and seek our God in prayer? Our gracious, kind, and loving Savior who dwells up in the Most High. Father God, we want to say thank you for this message, Almighty. For it is a soul changing message that shows us that we must be wise and implement what we are taught, all the instructions we learned since childhood. Because being intelligent is not enough, but doing everything wisely, it's our key. This is our humble prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen.